Well, um, it's plugged in, the new one. Uh, we're on three screws. We'll see how well that goes. Uh, I might have to drill that out, but uh, it's not buzzing. So, oh, I said I couldn't find a filter. I had oil and a filter in here. Do we have a brake light? An ABS light, but on a brake light. We'll know if the speedo works. I will uh, try that and report back. Look at that. Uh, I might say that's a win. speedometer destroyed that brake line just now. It's pissing all up there. It's pissing up here. Blew it on both sides. Whoops. Just saw that coming. Think that'll work?
Oh my god. Well, that's uh, just increased the value of this vehicle by a lot. There was zero PSI in the system before, so it was empty. Because I think it takes 32 ounces with rear. And I got 12 in it. Ice cold. Cold coming out the rear. 14 years, we got AC. It took 32 ounces. Pressure reads good on my gauge, my cheap little gauge anyway. But it was empty before we started, so we know we had to put at least two and a half cans in it. Feels good. So this is our line to the rear. I just need to get him off. I got a 12 millimeter wrench back here and I got it the fitting to break free. I don't know if it's spinning or if it's gonna snap the line off but I really don't care because I want to get this off so I know what size fitting I need to grab so I can run new line. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. That I want to pull the line down and get it out of there. So, a little bit at a time, my hand's burning off because the exhaust is right there, but that's okay. What's funny is I think it's, I think it broke free, that's funny. Usually it's tighter than that if we're breaking the line off. And I'm pretty sure that this uh, this guy is seized up here too, because when you were able to move it, you tap the brakes, it would be hard, and then all of a sudden it would let go, which is usually a sign of this getting stuck and slowly letting pressure back in. Anyway, it's stuck on right now. But, uh, so it's gonna need, hopefully, well, new line to the rear it's probably gonna need all three rubber hoses um, see how many bleeders we get out so I'll probably go around and see if I can crack all the bleeders off because that'll tell me what I need to get as far as calipers and wheel cylinders and all that jazz goes because now we're doing brakes full brake job I love it love to see it anyway I'm gonna keep working my way at that pull that out go back to the rear so there's our rear soft line going into a hard line I want to get that 13 millimeter bolt off the frame so I can pull that soft line out so I can get at the hard line better if I can manage it but I will see how well this goes got it So that'll give me just a little more reach in that line because it's kind of in the way, or the gas tank is kind of in the way. Oh, it's tight. Rusty in the frame. Anyway, I'm gonna play with that. So we're gonna get that out because then we can pull this line forward. And it's a 12 millimeter too. And then I can get at that um, hard line, hopefully. And what I might do is I might cut the line and pull the soft line out to here and then I can just put a socket on it. We just need to get it off so I know the fitting. And then I know how, where, how long I need to run this line because I'll pull the old line out. 
I said cut the line, right? That's where it broke off, so that's where it popped. Popped right there at the fitting. So now I just gotta pull the line forward and down and out. Hopefully, we'll see if it'll come out. I'd like to get it out of there anyway. I hate, as much of a hack as I can be, um, I hate when people leave all the old rotten lines up in there when they run new brake lines. I mean, I, I guess it's quick and easy, but uh, it bothers me. So we're gonna pull it out. Okay, so this is how I, was, I wedged the line under here to crack this line loose like this. Kind of just wedged it in here so this bracket would sit on the sway bar. And I was able to get that to crack loose, so we're gonna spin that off now. All right, so there's our brake line. So this is the front and it broke right there. Then we go back and it looks like it leaked there. And then this was pretty rough under the tank. And then it broke up here in two pieces. So that was like that. And it broke there and there. So well now we know how long of a line we need at least. Give or take a foot for different routing. And it's out of there. And we know what size fittings we need. How many bleeders do we break off here, guys? So we're going to have to bleed these brakes. Um, and I'd rather know what bleeders we're going to need to replace. I'm going to lose that. So, I got to go get parts tomorrow, so I guess what I'm trying to say is if I break bleeders off, I got to get new calipers or wheel cylinders or whatever, and I'm pretty sure I need new wheel cylinders back there anyway. So, what size is that? 10 or 3 eighths? It's a 10. All right, I'll uh, let you know which ones I break because I think I'm gonna need both hands. And when I said 10, I meant 3 eighths because the, ru the rust was kind of making it feel like a 10. It's definitely a 3 eighths, so. You don't want to just pull on it. That's how you strip stuff. You want to kind of hammer on it a little bit if you can manage it. I got it. Might have that one beat if I can kind of hold you where. Oh, we're definitely leaking brake fluid. So, what's going on? Because this is under pressure, because. So, it's blowing all the fluid out because this is under pressure because this line is seized. As you could tell, that was locked up, so that's why it's blowing pressure on it. I bet you when I'm done cracking this bleeder, that'll be able, that'll, uh, um, let that, uh, uh, rotor move. Which is good, it confirms that our caliper's probably good. Look at that. Let's see if I can. How would I? Look at that. Brake fluid just looks atrocious too, by the way. Can't get this to move. Oh, I'm gonna do that in two hands. Anyway, we got that off, so that's cool. It's dripping like it's good. So that line might not be bad. So our caliper might be... Eh, it is our caliper. Look at that. It's, it didn't release. Caliper's bad. Line's good. That's good. I don't have to touch that line. Should, uh... Oh, come on! Trying to do the right thing here and capture that shit and then spill the oil. Alright, so size on those is. What is this, a hex 7?
Yeah, it's moving. That's really about all it's got. That's all it That's it. I want to be able to see this. Like that. There we go. A little bit. But that's not... What? I felt that pit. I heard that pit. I'm buying used ones. Alright, I'm gonna go on and wash up. I'm going to bed. Alright. Hey, uh, you got the cap off the brake fluid. I'm just gonna put it on there so you don't lose it. Yep, I heard it pop and then it was locked. You got a stuck spot in it. I know you can get that off. You can clean it up, but there's a little seal. You gotta hone it and put and the seal in. Yeah, fucking wreck it because it had one apart when mine blew apart. Yeah, you gotta hone them out. The good thing was, I didn't have my finger in there when it popped. Yeah. But the shoes look good. Brand new. It's just from sitting. It's yep. just fucking pitted, shot. But if you wanna learn something, put the air to that one and blow that pissing out and then look, see what you got. There you go, you ready? Just get a little shot. All right, what are our chances on this bleeder? Oh, wow. Wow. That's actually crazy. I never have that good luck with bleeders. Put the WD-40 in there. Can't even get the tube to go in there. It's so rotten in there. Cause this one was uncapped. Oh, hey, look at that. So WD, I got probably save some for the other side. 
That might get us somewhere now. Hey, look at that. Oops, shoot it on the vehicle. That's good for it. Good as new. This one's turn. So we still haven't rebuilt yet. Um, where are we at here? Get onto that bleeder. There we go. Set it about there where I can get good leverage on it. There it goes. Look at that. Alright, so this one is locked up good too. I'm gonna pop the bleeder off, pop the line off. If I can't move it, I know this caliper's junk. So, I'm pretty, pretty sure. Well, we'll try to compress it too, but it's gonna be the same problem. I bet you they're both seized. But it's got good brand new pads, rotors look fine. I'll tell you, those stuck calipers clean the um, crap with these rotors, freshly resurfaced. Alright, so as you can see, this is me being cheap. I want to reuse that fitting. I was able to get what's left to that little brake line here, if it would focus back up. I got the fitting to spin on that line. Now I just gotta cut that line off flush so I can punch it through. Look at that. The other fitting was free, that was easy. This one was stuck when it came off. But uh, we're gonna run some new copper line from the front to the rear. So I dropped that, now it doesn't work. Mar the threads up or something. Anyway, I'm gonna reuse the fittings, cause why not? Oh, we're winning. Should be able to force that through, I think. Winning. I win. I had to push that back and crush it a little more, got it out. Look at that. Brand new 316s fitting. Nice. All right guys, so, um, we got some bad brake line, and we got some good brake line. Um, this is copper brake line. Some of you guys down south probably don't even know this exists. Um, we use this up north here because uh, it doesn't rust. Uh, this, is, this stuff is great for repairing rotten brake lines because it won't come back. So, we've got some 316s line, and we need to put flares on it. And so I've got this cheap little Capri Tool 316 double flaring kit. And I've had luck with these. It's worked fine for me. But uh, it's just a little, little guy here. You clamp your line in here. Then you run, uh, I think, whatever one of these is. Yeah, number one. And then you've got number two. I don't know. Here. There's, it comes with instructions. We're going to follow these instructions again because I can't remember how to do it. So, I'm going to put you on the stand. Here, you. And we'll relearn this together. Need a 10 mil. I'll be right back. All right, so step one is get the dang tool loosened up. Um, we've done that. These are now loose. You can pry it apart. Um, step two is take our brake line, and we need to insert it into the opening. So I need to bend our guy just a little bit so we can mess with it here. And the other great thing about this copper line, guys, is I dump my entire kit over. Great job. It's this copper line. You can bend this stuff by hand. It's great, and it's easy, and it's pliable, and it's flexible. So we've got to make sure you got your flare end on there. Don't don't forget that, or you'll be in a world of hurt, because you'll be doing it again. So we need to slide our guy on. He's on. Okay. Step three. Insert the 17 millimeter positioning bolt into the large threaded opening. Okay. Do that. Get all the rocks off it that I just put on it. Okay. 
and tighten. Slide the tubing till it's flush against that. Okay, it is flush. I'm gonna hold it flush with one hand and then we need to tighten our 10 millimeter bolts down to lock our guy in place. And this is easier with two hands. Or I, why did I say that I have two hands? It's easier with three, how about that? You, you like that answer? Maybe it's easier not leaning over and doing it in front of a camera. But that's what we're doing. Because I feel like showing you guys how to do this. Kind of. Half-assed. Okay, that's tightened. That's step four. Step five is to lubricate our boy right here. OP1. OP and insert him in. So OP1, it's got a down arrow. This guy right here. So we got to take our little special punch grease do not eat apparently apparently we can't eat this stuff okay lubricated all right dude don't drop this thing or i'll be pissed okay put that guy and then we've got to take this guy and put him in here and according to the thing it makes a bubble flare Okay, so I don't have a crescent wrench, so we're going to do the wrong thing and use a baby vice grip. I should have a crescent wrench to tighten that or somewhere, or whatever, a 17 millimeter wrench. don't have that right now, so this will be fine. Dang it. Here we go. Just absolutely messing this up. The camera thing caught it. Okay. I can't remember what I paid for these, but I think I got them on Amazon or something. I got a quarter inch line tool, which I haven't used yet, and this 3 16th one, which I've used a few times. And we're just gonna keep going until it don't go no more. Which is about right there, it's bottomed out. And then it says, makes a bubble flare, unscrew and remove the punch, and then I gotta flip it over to the OP2, and I don't know what that, what does that stand for? I, I don't know. Anyway, it's OP1 and 2. So now we unscrew that. And we're gonna clean up this end with my finger. And we're going to put that in some of that lubricant, grease, whatever you want to call it. And I see a kind of a flare in there, inside of there. You guys maybe can see it. See, it's kind of pushed out a little bit. Look at that. Now that we've got that guy out, set my vice grip down. Take this guy very carefully. Put him in some grease. I think we got a little bit too much on there. But that'll be fine. And we'll put him in there. Good luck, little buddy. And back at it we go. That's bottomed out, and back off we go. Let's see how poor of a job I did. And I've got some old line here we can compare it to even, so. All right, and then we can loosen this guy up. This is step seven they don't include. I think you can figure that part out, or at least they think you can. Okay, come on, out you go. I think that one looks good. I, I can already kind of see it here. I don't want to get it out. No spoilers. Come on. 
Oh yeah. Here we'll take the wipe the grease off. Yeah, that. that's not bad. You know, let's take our my guy here. Alright, so we've got our new line plumbed in right there. You can kind of see him shoddily run down the body. I haven't finished the, the bends. I haven't got it. It's down all the way across. I just got it loose because I just finished flaring it and I left me a little bit so I could stick it out under the wheel well here and flare here. And then I'm just going to line it up, bolt it in, and then push the line back and bend it in whatever fashion I need to to get it to fit without you know, getting ripped off when it hits something. I don't know. I'll, I gotta bend it in place after I get that connected. But we got this flare done on this side. Hopefully they don't leak. We won't know if they leak until we get the front calipers on and start putting fluid back into the system. But uh, it shouldn't, nah, it'll be fine. I think we, we did a good job. Better than that ru rusty rotten line that blew out in three spots, I think it blew apart. So, yeah. Yeah, look at that. So, I think that was, I don't know, $40, $50 tool or something. The line, the copper line was a little expensive. I want to say for 25 feet, it was like 50 bucks. Something like that. It was something like that. I don't know. I got a 25-foot roll at O'Reilly's, whatever that comes up online. It was something like that. It's not bad. And I didn't use all 25 foot. I got most of it right there still. Used what? eight ten foot maybe running front to rear and i kind of so what i did is i flared that end and then i shoved the line through i could have shoved the line through first and then came out here and flared it but whatever i uh, shoved the i ran the spool out here and i straightened a bunch out i shoved it through here and i ran it over the tank back how it was and over top of the rail and it kind of followed the original path so it's up out of the way so that's what I did. You could run it down under along the frame. I don't know, wherever you want to run it. It doesn't really matter, I guess. Just don't put it next to the exhaust. You don't boil your brakes. Otherwise, we're good to go. And I just got to hook that up. All right, got the uh, line run. It plumbed it back in. I'll crawl under here for you. So I got that back into the factory bolt hole back there. As you can see, there's our line goes up and over. And then it runs along the frame, both the tank and up into the fitting in the front. The National Weather Service in the Twin Cities has issued a severe thunderstorm warning for Northeastern Fairboat County. Northwestern Freeborn County, Southeastern Blue Earth County, Southwestern Wasika County, until 10.30 p.m. Alright, so I got both calipers on, driver and passenger, and I've got all four bleeders off. We're going to see if we can gravity bleed it a little bit. Hopefully it'll gravity bleed anyway. Alright, fill this guy up over full because I know it'll take plenty. This system is now pretty well empty. Drink up little buddy. Should be able to watch that level go down. Start seeing bubbles or something. Might need to prime it with the pedal a little bit. We'll see. But uh I'm gonna start playing around with this. Like I said, I got I got a bolt, bolt on here. So see how that goes. All right. Well, I was able to get brake fluid to come out of both fronts, and they released, by the way. So we got front brakes. I can't. I got a rock hard pedal. I got nothing back here. The bleeders are out. So. That could mean a couple things. That air just is really winning, or that rubber line is not doing so good. I wanna, might start it up here and see if we can get the brake booster to help me. And we'll try that, hopefully. Otherwise, I'm gonna try crack the line at that junction there, 
and we'll see if I can get pressure through that. If I can't get there, I'll crack my new line here, and if I get pressure here but not there, we know this hose is bad, which it might be. No saying it isn't, it's an old hose. Finally got fluid to the rears. Starting to get fluid out of this one, so we're gonna tighten this one up. Hopefully that uh, wheel cylinder doesn't freeze up, because I haven't touched this one yet. But we're gonna tighten this one up, get fluid to the other one. And it'll make my life more difficult, but it doesn't matter, we got it off once. That drum's shot, it's already cracked. Well, not cracked, it's got chips missing. Now we should get fluid out of this one. What I realized is when I'm pushing this down right here, you think that's bottom? No, that's not bottom. That last little bit's the rears. That's how I was messed up. And then all of a sudden I started hearing air out of the rear. Yeah, I can hear air coming out of that one. Nope, no fluid yet. Make sure I got Pretty full, honestly. I didn't. It didn't take much to send fluid to the rear. Probably a bunch of air. Well, we know that much, but ah! Oh, saved it. Freaking runs good. I'll tell you that much. Oh no, we do have fluid. Look at that. Must say, it started dripping. Got. So, what that means is I've got fluid all four brakes. So that means I need to, uh, I said that twice. I need to rebuild the passenger rear on that side over there. So then, cause you're supposed to start bleeding from the farthest away, so you bleed the passenger rear, then you driver rear, and then passenger front, and then driver front. But, I wanted to get a an initial bleed on the new line that's going front to rear which is not leaking. Yes, let's go. So let's see if this one locks up a little bit. Because it might, might not. I don't know how well I'll be able to tell. That. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to tell. Anyway, we got fluid to all four, which means my new line's got fluid in it. Sounds good. That one hasn't locked up, which is a good sign. All right, so I picked up the three brake hoses, the one front left, front right, and um, rear. I was getting fluid to all the brakes, but they were kind of still sticking, and I knew that the wheel cylinders and the calipers were good. Usually it ends up being this, and here's a prime example. Um, here's the rear brake hose, and it's got fluid to it. When you uh, take these fittings off, or in my case, bust the lines off because uh, they're seized, you should be dripping fluid here. Um, we're not dripping at all, meaning there is no flow in this hose. It's constricted, which is what will cause you'll be able to push fluid through these, but the constriction of the hose will not let it go back out, which sticks your wheel cylinders on, which are probably about to be replaced because... Good luck to me getting the lines out of them. Anyway, I got the fronts out. The front lines broke free, no problem. It's this rear one, and I knew that was coming as soon as I got to this point. There was nothing I could do. Anyway, rears are, it's what is it, like a four foot section of copper? You just get the right ends on it. You don't even have to flare them. You just get the right ones, and you're good. You know, two four foot sections of 316 should be plenty, but... We're gonna try get the we're gonna try get the lines out of the out of the um, wheel cylinders. I don't see it going well, but we're gonna try. Like I said, at least the front ones are ready. And technically, technically, I wanted to do this because I got in all three hoses, but I got the wrong hose for the rear. Apparently, mine's two wheel ABS or something. And this is the two-wheel ABS line. Apparently, it's rarer than the four-wheel. So, you know, 
I gotta go get that line, but I figured before I made another trip, figure out what lines I break off, which for sure this, um, so for sure we'll need the two rear lines. Like I said, we'll probably need both wheel cylinders. So we're gonna attempt at, at those. It's not gonna go well, I, I, I guarantee. Well, as long as we don't snap the fitting off, it doesn't matter if we break the line. We just need the fitting to come off. We should be able to do that. With a little bit of heat, I should be able to, but I gotta be careful. I don't wanna burn the rubbers on them. Anyway, status update on the old brakes here. That <sighs> kick in the shin. After I snap both the center ones, both of the side ones come right out of the wheel cylinders, no trouble. I get, like the line's good, and I can rotate it. That's insane. It never happens. Both of them. And I mean, I took a vice grip to it because I didn't care. But apparently that worked. That's, well, hey. Wheel cylinders are good. That's, that's a shame. Yeah. Whatever, it'll be better with lines and it's cheap. It's like 10 bucks. 5 bucks a line or something like that. It's not bad. Alright, so we got all new lines on the driver's side here. And that was gravity blood and that was dripping fluid. And we got a new one on the passenger side, which you guys saw. That one gravity blood and started dripping. And then we've got a new line going to this rear, which was gravity blood and dripping. We've got a new line going to this one, which was not dripping because it's got that top piece there and that one I'll just have to bleed bleed it's fine it'll probably gravity bleed if I pop that bleeder but uh got those new lines run and into our 
new brake hose for the rear. So that hose was for sure, that one was cooked. That one was letting no fluid by the front ones. I was skeptical of. They seem to hold the calipers a little bit, but not as bad as the old calipers. I did I don't know, I didn't trust them. And they're over 20 years old, and they that is a common fail point. You're supposed to replace them when they get old. So we've done just that. Now if we have sticking brakes, we know it isn't the actual lines in the system. And all that fluid has all been flush, so naturally it is it all um bled and when the brakes popped all the old fluid disappeared so it's got all new fluid in the system you know new lines from front to rear the only lines that aren't new are the ones going to the wheels in the front because they're good um, salt doesn't pool at the front of the vehicle so they don't rot out as bad but uh yeah so now i got to rebuild that drum assembly and then I can bleed these brakes and put the thing back on wheels and test drive and test the brakes out and see if we've got actual brakes. And I can feel comfortable driving it and unfortunately diagnosing the transmission. Alright guys, so we're on a wheel cylinder for the passenger rear here. And I got it to move back and forth. Like I got the when I got the driver's side when it was stuck initially, and I was able to uh get the rubbers off here and spray some lubricant here and work it back and forth to where it sprung out on its own, no problem. This one was just a little sticky on, oh, it was sitting like, just like that on this side. This side was fine. But I figure I'll show you on my gross um, mat that's better than gravel. Um, as you can see, it's well used. How these, these work, really, it's just a big cylinder with a bore in it and uh, Inside in the center there, you've got this little spring here that keeps your guys pushed out. And then you've got your rubber seals here. And then on the outside of the rubber seals, you've got your pistons. And those little rubber seals push on these pistons, which then push on your arms here, which then push your pads out, or your shoes. Anyway, there's just a little bit of roughness on the cylinders here, or the pistons. I'll be on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it the wrong way. And I'm going to take a, I don't know, like a 500 grit sandpaper and kind of wet sand it with this oil. And uh, knock some of that stuff off. And these should move in that bore a little better. But our rubbers are pliable. They look good. So we shouldn't have any issues there. But yeah, I'm just going to do it the wrong way. And I'm just going to clean them up a little bit. So that's not bad. Okay, that was welded to the cylinder, to the uh, backing plate, though. That took some hammering to get out. Anyway, I'm going to do this quick before I lose all my brake fluid that's leaking out of that line now. But that's how, they, that's how they work. They're pretty simple. And then all of this is obviously a hydraulic pressure just pushing out from the inside where your line comes in. All right, look at that. That's springing up on its own. And then we go to the other side. Ah! Go back to this side. And I use 2500 grit, by the way. And with that oil in there, just you know, like wet sanding it. Worked real well. So look at that. And then I just sprayed a little bit of lubricant to help her out there. And uh, guess what? Good to go. And it wasn't really pitted in there. So we, it was, it was pretty clean. It was just honestly dried grease and grime and whatever was kind of sticking it. But yeah, those rubbers are still pliable, so they're gonna seal properly. It looks like because the bore is still nice. They're just a little sticky. Look at that. And that should work a lot better. I was kind of weary about that sticking. It's definitely not gonna stick now. So I build drums the wrong way, but uh, I just had this great idea. If you guys are having trouble holding your your uh, your shoes in. I got a vice grip holding that pad in, vice grip holding that pad in. Now I can mess with getting all the springs in up top here. That was a, I thought that was an okay idea. All right, I think I got this one rebuilt. I think that's right anyway. We'll see. I gotta uh, adjust it for the new drum, which is hiding right there. So, 
I got a little bit of pad life in these $2 pads. Anyway, enough to get her going down the road. So, that looks pretty freaking good to me. It's all greased up, so it's not going to seize up on the next guy. And Yay. So, I'm glad that's done. Okay, so I got to bleed brakes now, and unfortunately, I'm by myself. So what I've got is I got my 3 8 wrench on there, and then I've got this rubber guy into this, and this little brake bleeding bottle. Um, now, you see a lot of people um, will just use, like, pop cans or something. That's a great idea. Uh, I needed the adapters anyway to do it right, so I, I just bought the little kit. I don't know what is this? I think I got this one a Rock Auto performance tool. It was like five bucks or something. I don't know. It was not expensive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack that bleeder and I'm gonna keep an eye on that bottle, but I'm gonna fill that bottle up. I'm just gonna get you guys adjusted on here. And you guys can you guys can watch for me. If you want to tighten that bleeder while I pump it up, that'd be great. But uh, you guys are lazy. Mr. Bleeder, play nice today. Maybe I'll crack the bleeder first. Get out of my way. I know you'll come off. Plus, I gotta. Mr. Bleeder is cracked. You can sit up there. That'll probably take a tumble when it gets pressure, but you never know. We'll see. Anyway, the idea is to fill that up and push all the air out this while not letting air back in with this hose. The idea, anyway, and there should be, yep, there's a little hose in here that keeps that guy from sucking air. what we got going on. We're gonna... I'm just gonna commit to that. We're gonna try that. Floor, it looks like. Come on, keep doing that. How's that? Are we getting any more air bubbles? Oh, look, I don't see any air bubbles in this line. It's probably fine. And guess what? This, uh, well, I guess it's not tightened because naturally, uh, the leader's off. Let's try that for now. I'm gonna compress this and we'll see if this locks up and uh, doesn't stay. So we're gonna do it a couple more times. in my drain pan. I'll hook this up and then we're gonna pop off break the reservoir and then we're gonna do it again. Oh that was letting out air bubbles. So set that one right about there where you can't see him. Here you go.
Thanks. I don't see any air bubbles in that line. I think that one's good. Okay. Put my bleeder back on. I was holding that bleeder on that uh, um, other, um, what's that, a greaser. I held that bleeder. I was losing it like the second down anyway. I just walk away. I don't like this. This, this, this range is shot. I'm throwing this range away before it causes any problems. I found a good 3 a strength, all the other ones are just white. That one just out of a bunch of air. That worked. Right there. There you go. Be a plug. I mean, it can't be that plug, but. Well, it's definitely like fluid out of here, so I don't know what's going on. That's weird. Like, I've got a full pedal. Okay, let's pretend that that bleeder was clogged and try again. Okay, that's funny. That bleeder was clogged. It was like fluid out. And we're full, so. Close that up. Tighten that up. Put our little rubber cap on. Keep that bleeder clean. Apparently that didn't work anyway because it was clogged. Oh, we should. Here we got brakes. Thing drives pretty freaking smooth. Brakes work freaking phenomenal. Locked them up. Good to go. Look at that. Freaking sweet. All right. That's not hot at all. That one's not hot. I don't smell brakes. That one's ice cold, actually. And that one's nice and cool. So, um, we got brakes. We got brakes. Is that... I think that's taillights. I don't think that's brake lights. Make sure the brake pedal's not staying down just a little bit. Nope, that's not brake lights. Look at that. Nice. All right. Shut this bad boy down. Make sure the dome lights go off. I'll unhook the battery. I don't trust it yet. Fine. There we go. Dome lights off. Freaking sweet. All right, well, second and third gear, you can at least drive it to town. So I'm just going to get the uh, plates put on it, and we are good to go. Oh, I need to go to the junkyard and get this harness for these plugs. I think it's this one or one of these specifically. I don't even need the harness. I just need to get the plug for the lights. Actually, no, it is the harness. It's the, It's in here that's corroded. Probably just get them at the get the pigtails and everything at the junkyard, and then we can fix that. And then we have lights. Nice. I meant to do that last time and I forgot. Oh no! An excuse to go to the junkyard. Woe is me.